Bon Fletcher, welcome to K7 Project Bluebird. In uh, 1964, your late husband, Sid, uh, was chairman of the Barmer District Council uh, when he travelled to Adelaide uh, to have a meeting with Donald Campbell's World Speed Record Team. How did that all come about? Well, Sid had been in the council since about nine, uh, 1960. And in 1964, he read in the papers how that Donald was looking for somewhere to attempt this water speed record. And he said, why not Lake Bonnie? And um, off his own bat and without consulting any of the other councillors, he went off to Adelaide and met the party down there. And they thought it was a wonderful idea and they agreed to come. Uh -huh. So the outcome of Sid's trip down there, off his own bat, was that Donald Campbell and his entourage yes, arrived they, in Barmer? I just forget whether they came up and had a look at it first, but at any rate, they all came up. Yeah. And and uh, obviously the council did agree in the end that Sid's idea was they, a good one? They weren't very happy at the moment, first at, of all. At the time. And I yeah. believe he also uh, made some uh, unauthorised uh, agreements as, as far as accommodation goes. Yeah, to stay at the hotel, they weren't very happy about that either. At the Barmer Hotel? No, yes. Yeah. Uh, but that was all smoothed over? And yes, ultimately they were very happy and uh, quite proud of the fact that Donald was staying there. I think as we all are now, now that we're starting to realise the importance right. of it. Um, and then, so it would have been on about the 19th, 19th of September 1964, Donald Campbell flew his plane into Barmer and landed at the Barmer airstrip that I believe that the council had recently gra uh, graded for that. Uh, did you attend the occasion when Yes, he... we went out and I think some of my children were with me. There weren't very many there, but we did go out to meet him. Mm. And what do you recall about uh, the time when Donald actually arrived at the airstrip? Well, I was told to keep away. <laughs> and why was that? <laughs> yeah, I was told that Donald was very superstitious and I'd bought a new dress for the occasion and it was green. <laughs> so uh, one of his fellows told me, keep away, Donald's very superstitious. And uh, he didn't like the colour green. Is what hated saying. it, hated yes, green. really hated it. And uh, what was the atmosphere like in Barmer or, or what was the feeling of the community well, at the time? There was quite a lot of excitement because people were coming up from Adelaide and coming from all over to view the boat. They seemed to imagine that as soon as he got here, he'd make the, make the speed attempt almost the next day. Mm. Uh, and they were very disappointed when it didn't happen. But uh, there was lots of people around to look at the boat. Mm. So an air of excitement within yes, the Yes, great excitement, especially yeah. on weekends when people would come up. Yes. Uh, so it was a pretty good tourist draw card for Barmer. Oh, yes, it, yes. yes. That's why I think Sid was forgiven in the end for making these arrangements on his own. I think you described in the article you wrote for the Barmer Library that it was a, an audacious move on Sid's part. Oh, it was. <laughs> I believe that... Uh, whilst Donald was here, he liked uh, to party a bit and he, he joined in in a lot of local events. Uh, what sort of things do you recall him participating oh, in? Lots of dancers. Uh, friends of mine, um, Mr Hooper and his wife Joyce, had the motel and Donald was there for quite a few dinners and also the Barmer Hotel had regular dinner dances and uh, they would always be there and make up a party for it. Mm. That's on a Saturday night for there. And uh, at the motel was just any night when Donald decided he'd invite a few people to come along and have a meal with him. He loved to have people around. I believe uh, you were in attendance, you and Sid were in attendance one night, uh, and there was this number of people sitting at the table. What yes. happened? Uh, yeah, it was quite funny, really, because Neil and Joyce Hooper had some friends of theirs staying, and we were there, and some friends of ours, and a few other people, and uh, Donald suddenly realised there was only there was thirteen at the table, so he went around and gathered somebody that I can't remember who, but to make up an extra person at the table. So that uh, basically solidifies the, the notion that he was a very superstitious. Oh, he was man. very superstitious. Yeah. I believe that while Donald was in uh, Barmer, he helped out a lot with the uh, local service clubs in their fundraising efforts. Uh, and uh, can you remember any of these particular type uh, charitable events? Well, probably the main thing I remember is his slave auction. 
and that created quite a bit of excitement in Barma. Uh, I think it was a Saturday morning from memory and there was a lot of people around and the Apex boys dressed up as slaves and uh, one of the local auctioneer was auctioning them off and the people were buying them for various reasons, either to help around the houses or blocks or something. But Donald bought about five of them. We wondered what he'd do with them. Tonya, I remember, bought one or two, one of, a couple of the best-looking ones, I think. <laughs> uh, yes, at any rate, we did find out ultimately just what they were for because uh, Donald, or the, the slaves, arranged a big party down the lake and from my memory, I think all of Barmer was invited. I know there's a tremendous crowd of people and they had barbecues and things down the lake. Mm. And uh, I have been told that it was for Leo Villa's birthday, but I'm not quite sure of that. Now, many, many of uh, Donald's record attempts on Lake Bonnie uh, required a, a fairly large team of volunteers. Um, did, did you uh, have any particular... Um, I guess, a uh, reason to uh, have anything to do with, with uh, the volunteers? Oh, and timekeepers, you mean? Well, timekeepers. Yes, and... yeah, most of them were voluntary. They'd come up for a while, maybe they'd have a few days off and come some, uh, several of them I know came from Sydney and uh, their time would be up, they'd have to go home and it was quite inconvenient sometimes because the lake would be almost perfect mm. and suddenly they didn't have a timekeeper. And so they had to have timekeepers there for the record to be acknowledged. And and I believe that uh, in relation to one of the timekeepers, you had a chance to go for a flight in Donald's plane. Yes, that was really wonderful. I was very surprised when he asked whether I'd like to go for a trip to Adelaide. He was taking one of the timekeepers, and I think it was Evan Green. And uh, he was a particularly nice fellow, and I was only 42 at the time, and... That wasn't a real reason why I wanted to go, but uh, I was quite excited about going, and uh, we went down. And uh, you landed at the Adelaide airport, and I believe while you were there, you, you overheard uh, Donald speaking to a, a person at the airport. Yes, what was that apparently like? unbeknown to me, they were having trouble with the plane, and it was losing oil all the way down, and uh, he was quite concerned about it, but never said a word to me. I had no idea. And that had to be fixed before we could, could return home. So the plane was fixed, you collected the new timekeeper and uh, came back to Barmer. Um Did you uh, actually attend at many of the attempts on the lake to...? Uh... Oh, we were there for quite a lot of them, yeah. yeah. And uh, how would you describe the area uh, of the lake uh, uh, when uh, Donald was um, attempting these speed? Yeah, well, the, Donald explained to, to us what was happening there was water coming in. It was a high water. It was coming in, and although the top of the lake seemed to be smooth enough, mm -hmm. there was eddies at below, mm -hmm. and uh, the boat just could not go uh, fast on conditions like that. And so while people thought, now why doesn't he make this attempt? But he knew he couldn't do it. So... Um that prevented him ultimately from achieving the world yeah. record on Lake Bonnie, uh, perhaps that and maybe one or two other things. But uh, um, what about um, as far as uh, spectators go, were there many people around at all? Oh, there was always crowds of people, particularly on the weekends. People would come up from Adelaide and from all over to, to, to either to see the Bluebird or to see the attempt. I also believe that uh, from back uh, at that time, whilst uh, Donald and Tonya were here, that um, Sid and you purchased a speedboat. Uh, can you tell us about that? Yes, we bought this boat and uh, we all wanted to learn to water ski and uh, we decided to call it Tonya and had it painted on the boat. And uh, we asked Tonya whether she'd like to christen it for us and she agreed. And uh, we went out to the old ski ski um, boat site, site yes. Mm. And um, she was going to christen the boat. And I'd taken a bottle of champagne out. And she said, no, I'm not going to waste champagne. And she said, have you got something else? And we had a bottle of lemonade. So she cracked the bottle of lemonade on it. 
So then we sat on the stones that are around there and drank the champagne. <laughs> yeah, quite an event. So you, you would have obviously uh, gone for a bit of a cruise in the boat? Yeah, we went for a cruise and uh, we also uh, had a bit of a picnic mm. and most of us went into the water, mm. had a bit of a swim, go on the boat. The boat was christened, proudly named Tonya after Tonya yes. Byrne and uh, must have been a very... Uh, uh, pleasing thing to uh, be able to do that. To yes, it was great, great memory. I think we spent the afternoon together and mm. out, the, out there, had a few rides in the boat. And so Bishop's Boat Shed was where the Bluebird was stored and would that have been the cent central or the hub of activity for the attempt or? Oh, well, yes. Well, the boat was there all the time. So when any attempt was being made or any consultation mm. about the water it was always down there. On New Year's Eve 1964, after Donald had left because he'd found that the lake conditions weren't suitable to him getting a world record, uh, you're at the Barmer Hotel at a dance uh, and I believe you received some news. Yes, Sid and I were there and it, the word got around that Donald had succeeded in his attempt and uh, we rang the hotel, or Sid rang the hotel where Donald and Tonya were, and we were able to speak to them and congratulate them, and they were all extremely excited about it. Finally, uh, I would ask the question of what would be your most enduring memories of uh, the time you spent with Donald uh, whilst he was here in Barmer? Um, well, it was always very interesting. Uh, well, to know, to know that you were with a, a personality like that and he was so easy to get on with and uh, somebody that you could really think of as a friend when he was well renowned, it was, it was quite nice. He had very light blue eyes and while you're talking to him every now and then he'd wink and you really wouldn't know it was a, an affliction of the eye or whether it was just to <laughs> get you laughing or something. Uh, I do believe that, that that was one of his common uh, things and it was uh, one of his trademark. Uh, yes, it was. Uh, Tonya was always trying to look after Donald to make sure he had everything he needed. Mm. On You know, if he was going to make it an attempt to have, it, have his proper shoes and he had the mascot to hand to him at the last minute and things like that. It's Mr Whoppet, the rabbit. Yeah. <laughs>